The only thing better than having one GTX 1080 in your gaming computer is having two GTX 1080s in your computer. Or having a 1080 Ti, that probably would have been a better use of my money. Now, for running two GTX 1080s in SLI, if you're playing at 4K, which you would have to be playing at that much at least if you're using two of these cards, NVIDIA says you need their HB SLI bridge, which if you buy it new, tends to run about 40 bucks if you don't have a new motherboard that came with it in the box. Now, if you don't have an HB bridge, but you still have one of these flex bridges, or one of the skinny rigid bridges, will those work for 4K? NVIDIA says it doesn't, but actually it does. And in today's video, we're going to compare using a single rigid bridge, we're going to compare using a single flex bridge, we're going to compare using a single HB bridge, you can't connect more than one of them anyway, versus using a rigid and a flex bridge. The results were actually really surprising. Since we're measuring how much the bridge changes the rate at which the SLI data can be transferred, Choosing games that scale to the best with SLI was the main deciding factor here for our game selection. For our first test, we ran Rocket League, simulating a 4 on 4 all-star bot match. With no SLI bridge, just using a single GPU, we got 117 frames per second. This is in 4K, with everything cranked up as high as it'll go, using MLAA. Using just one rigid bridge away from the display connectors, we got 183.8 frames per second. Using the flex bridge, we were a little under that. Using the high bandwidth bridge, we were just barely above rigid. We're talking a less than 3% difference here. However, using both the flex and the rigid bridges instead of the high bandwidth bridge, we got our highest frames per second. When looking at 1% and 0.1% lows, it is worth noting that the 1% low was best with our dual SLI bridge setup. However, the 0.1% low was about in the middle of the range. Um, the HB bridge had the best 0.1% low, but honestly, you're only going to notice that 0.1% of the time. So take that however you will. In Rocket League training, where we just hit the reset button until we started in the same spot each time and just sat there for 5 minutes, with no SLI bridge we got just under 120 frames per second. Our rigid bridge got 223, our flex bridge was 216, our high bandwidth bridge was 219, worse than just the one rigid bridge, amazingly. And our one of each SLI bridge scenario was literally just a third of a frame per second behind the HB bridge. We're talking less than a 0.2% difference here, so within the margin of error. Simulating just one loop in Car Mechanic Simulator, with no SLI bridge, 4K, everything maxed, 74 frames per second. With our rigid bridge, we got 143. 0.5. Our flex bridge, again, 143.5. Our high bandwidth bridge, amazingly, scored lower at 143.1, and our flex plus rigid bridge scored 143.7. Honestly, these results are so close together that any of them would be fine, but it is worth pointing out that the most expensive option here technically performed the least well out of all the SLI bridges, and you don't lose any performance for going with anything cheaper. Even when it comes to the 1% and 0.1% lows, there is pretty much no difference here either. In conclusion, assuming your motherboard, like an X370 board or a Z270 board, comes with an HB bridge, you're better off selling it on eBay for $30, keeping $10 in your pocket, and then using the $20 to buy a couple flex bridges or a couple rigid bridges or one of each like we have done here. It makes absolutely no sense how making money by selling that and buying cheaper stuff would get you better performance, but hey, I'm not going to complain about getting some few extra dollars and a few extra frames per second. 
If you enjoyed this video, found it super useful, make sure to give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Make sure to check out some of our previous videos as well, and we'll see you in the next one.